are watching Turkish American Television. Welcome to the Turkish American Hour. I'm Gökşin Kerry. Our guest is Louis Epstein. Mrs. Epstein is the co-founder of Fairgrade. Welcome, Mrs. Epstein. Thank you very much and good morning. I'm really glad to be here. And what is Fairgrade? Can you tell us about it? Yes, Fairgrade was a parent group that I co-founded back um, in late 2007 that was designed to um, give our children who were graduating from Fairfax County Public Schools mm -hmm. better college opportunities um, when they applied to college, when they applied for college honors programs, and when they applied for college merit-based scholarships because their grades tended to be lower in Fairfax County Public Schools than if they were attending one of the most, uh, the typical other school districts in the United States, where a 90 would be either an A or an A minus. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, until we got things changed, that 90 was going to be a B plus. Yeah. Well, what are your connections with the uh, teachers, your relationship? Well, I have always gotten along really well with my girls' teachers and with other teachers in their mm -hmm. schools. So when fair grade was um, getting up and running, I volunteered to go and talk with the three organizations that represent teachers in Fairfax mm -hmm. County Public Schools. Um, I went to each of them, and as I talked with them and found out what their views were on the grading policies, I also talked with them about their concerns on the mm -hmm. school system as a whole. And those concerns were pretty widespread. Um, they had a lot to do with working conditions as well as with the way in which the superintendent was proposing to make budget cuts. After that, I organized a panel with them and um, each of them sent a representative to talk about their vision for how we could um, adjust to the recession and to budget realities without having as adverse an impact on our students and our teachers in the classroom setting. Um, since then, um, I've worked, continued to work closely with them. When I co-founded the Fairfax Education Coalition in 2009, um, both the two, the two big teachers groups um, also joined and I work closely with their officers um, and you know, I've gotten along with them. You know, we continue to get along and talk constantly. Tell us about your background. You didn't tell us about background. Oh, well, which background? Okay. You're, <laughs> well, you're an attorney, you're a tax attorney. Yes, so I went um, to Harvard College and to Harvard Law School way back when, um, and I worked for 15 years as a lawyer. I specialized in tax law, mm -hmm. um, and I subspecialized for most of that in um, sort of tax laws affecting the insurance industry, which is a very mathematical area. Um, even though I didn't have much of a math background myself, but I enjoyed it. Um, when my girls were in elementary school, I realized that with three daughters going in three different directions, it really would be better for me to be a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. than to try to work as a tax lawyer. So I stopped working as a tax lawyer, um, and I stayed home, but I didn't really stay home. I immediately began volunteering in their schools and you know, helping with the chess club, helping accompany students on things, because I had started as a music major and I was a pianist, um, and doing many other different kinds of things in the schools, and that's how I got involved. How wonderful. And uh, why are you running for the school board? Well, when I worked on all these different groups, I got to know parents um, who were leaders of many other organizations. And they'd all encountered the same problem mm -hmm. when they brought their concerns to their school board members and to the superintendent and his staff which is that they weren't um, being treated that well. Mm -hmm. They encountered a lot of stonewalling. Um, they mm -hmm. were told, you know, go away. Nobody really cares about this. You're the only person who really has come to us when it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. Or they were unable to get
get information without filing a Freedom of Information Act request. Um, that's why we all got together and we decided after looking at the problem together, and it's a very bipartisan, unusual coalition, that we needed to change things from the top and that meant turning over the school board. And so mm -hmm. several of us are running for school board around the county and I'm running mm -hmm. for school board um, in what's called the Drainsville District, which includes McLean, Great Falls, the town of Herndon, and a little bit of Vienna and a little bit of Falls Church. If you elect it, how does uh, Fairfax County Public Schools benefit about your expertise? Well, I think that there's two kinds of um, expertise that I bring to the school board. Mm -hmm. One of them is sort of my work as a volunteer over the years. I've gotten to know so much about the budget because I was the budget chair of the Fairfax Education Coalition and I brought my budget analysis to um, a lot of different people. I compiled data from 10 years to show where the money was being spent and people didn't really realize that, including most of the sitting school board members. And this connects with your background, I guess? Yes, it does because my tax law background, um, I, I'm sort of data oriented. Mm -hmm. And I always feel like you don't trust um, someone to summarize something to you unless you know you have reason to believe that they are telling you the truth. Yeah. You go back and you check your facts. And that's my legal training as well. My training is that when an issue arises and for example, a principal might say, well, we can't do it that way. I don't stop with listening to, you can't do it that way. I say, why not? And then if the answer is, well, because there's a, a regulation, I say, well, is it a Fairfax County School Board regulation? Mm -hmm. Is it a state regulation? Is it a federal regulation? Mm -hmm. Because only when you know the source of the authority, which is you know, pre preventing you from doing something you want to do, can you understand mm -hmm. what you're up against and what yeah. you need to change. Well, that's very nice that you know what you're doing. Yes, thank you. Uh, your expertise, your background, yes. which supports this understanding. So how can parents support their children? Well, you always have to, every child is different. And for the last 11 years, after I stopped working as um, a tax lawyer, I started getting phone calls and emails from parents all over the county because mm -hmm. they heard that I was somebody who understood the system and they couldn't necessarily get their own school board member to tell them what you know they wanted to know, so they looked around, they found me somehow, word of mouth, the internet, I don't know how, mm -hmm. and they would call me or contact me. And the answer is always, take a look at your own child, and I'd have to listen, because every child is different. What's wrong between what their child wants or needs and what the school is doing? And then you know, look for ways to either supplement um, with tutoring for remediation or with um, extra enrichment. It depends on the kid, and usually in the subjects um, where the kid has an interest. Uh, and that's, you know, that's part of the picture. And of course, the parents then can learn more about the system. I always, as a PTA mm -hmm. president, said mm -hmm. to parents, in order for you to do a good job of advising your own child, you need to know what you're talking about. And the way to do that is to get involved at the school. Yeah. If you have a child at high school, figure out what he or she is likely to be interested in and join the group that you know will help support that, whether it be a booster group or the PTA. Yeah. Um, and that is a great way to become familiar with the school, to meet other parents who often know a lot mm -hmm. more about it than sort of a novice parent, mm -hmm. and um, to make connections and then to be in a good position to provide your child with good advice that mm -hmm. he or she will listen to because yeah. they know that it's based you know, on fact. And you know that it will have a nice result. And it will have a nice result, absolutely. Oh, wonderful. And how would you encourage foreign-born parents and their children to get involved? Well, it's funny because I was actually unusually good at that when my kids were going up. I, mm. um, they went to, uh, in the McLean schools, uh, Chesterbrook Elementary School, Franklin Sherman Elementary mm. School, Haycock Elementary School, Longfellow Middle School, um, and then I went over to TJ. And all of those schools have a significant number of immigrant parents. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, there are sometimes concerns that the immigrant parents are less likely to volunteer in the schools, either because in their home country, parents typically don't volunteer in the schools, mm -hmm. or sometimes because they don't speak English as well and they mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable. Yeah. So one of the things I did as a PTA officer is I tried to figure out good ways for those parents to feel comfortable volunteering. I oh, remember, wonderful. like, uh, for Science Olympiad, we needed to organize this big tournament when my girls were mm -hmm. at Longfellow Middle School. And part of that was organizing a nice luncheon 
for uh, the judges mm -hmm. who were going to, you know, all volunteers. And so you want to feed your volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, what I did is I sought out some of the moms, and they were Korean moms, in fact, oh. who didn't speak much English, but whose kids were participating, and they really wanted to help. And I actually spoke with their children who would translate into um, Korean for mm -hmm. um, their parents. Mm -hmm. And I said, could you help? be the people who organize this, um, you know, uh, judge's lunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mom said, oh, absolutely. And we had the most phenomenal lunch. The judges and the other volunteers said, this is the best lunch we have ever had. The moms were happy and they were involved and they got to see what was going on. And you can always, if you structure things properly, figure out a way to bring in volunteers and to use their strengths, you know, and to adjust mm -hmm. to, to certain things where they're uncomfortable. Um, and, and that's what I, you know, like to do. How wonderful. So is there any message to your viewers? Well, you know, the message is that this is a big year. We have um, a 12-member um, school board uh, in Fairfax County, mm -hmm. and um, it's turning over this year. Um, all 12 seats are up for election. Six of the incumbents are not running. Two of the remaining six incumbents are running unopposed, and there are people challenging, um, I believe, the other four as well as a lot of new faces on the block. And I'm one of those new faces, and I have this you know, long bipartisan support from people who want to mm -hmm. reform the system. Mm -hmm. But get to know who the school board members are in your district. Um, get to know what their real positions are and not just what they say in mm -hmm. an election year. And uh, take a look on the internet, you know, dig around, and then please go out and vote on November 8th. Thank you, Louise, being with us here today. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for watching Turkish American Air. I'm Gökşin Kerry. Hoşça kalın. Goodbye.